Yes, Argyle is a shockingly ridiculous movie. More romance novel than Spy Caper. Although a romance novel with spies in it, to be fair. And I suspect that a lot of people will not care for this film. But if you are a massive Sam Rockwell fan like myself, well then you will have a fantastic time watching this movie. Also, shout out to Bryce Dallas Howard, who plays a very different type of leading lady. I love this movie for them and for me. Uh, but as whether or not it's for you, uh, well, I'm gonna, no spoilers, because there's so many great twists and turns in this film, but uh, I'm gonna kind of give you an idea of what the movie's like, and then, then you tell me if you think it's for you or not. But I think it's a very fun ride, as I said, and a great Valentine's Day movie. I maybe would have even released this movie a little bit closer to Valentine's Day, because I just think it's such a treat. Uh, so yes, that's right. Whether or not you enjoy Argyle depends on how you'd feel. If you thought you were going on a date with Henry Cavill, but then Sam Rockwell showed up instead. Now, I would be delighted because as I said, I love Sam Rockwell and he is just so utterly charming and hilarious here. I mean, the movie really is about how he is a better date at the end of the day than Henry Cavill. Uh, I mean, and the fact that, you know, Sam Rockwell has an incredible body of work. I mean, he's won a frickin' Oscar, but I have to say, I think this is the best role he's ever had. I just really, really love him here. Uh, also, kudos to Rockwell and Bryce Dallas Howard for delivering such egoless performances, because it takes a lot of guts to happily play the realistic versions of Henry Cavill and Dua Lipa. I mean, I'm like, wow. And, but they went for it, and I feel that they pull it off. I think they make the argument, and I think they win the argument. Although some people might think that it's an impossible goal to, to substitute one for the other. But I, I, again, I thought it was great. And the movie realizes how difficult a goal that is, and that's a lot what the first part of it is about. And then it becomes like a totally different movie. It's nuts! But was Universal right to sell this as a Henry Cavill, Dua Lipa, John Cena movie when they're hardly in the film at all? Well, I guess that depends on the box office. Although while well, Mean Girls did pretty well at the box office, it ended up not even doing fantastic. I think because of the misleading ad campaign, you know, people didn't know it was a musical, a lot of people. <clears throat> and I think that the, let's call it a mini backlash, because the movie still did do well. Number one, three weeks in a row. But there was a mini backlash. It was palpable from some social media comments that went viral to the audience scores. But here's the thing. For people who do enjoy this movie, Argyle, the misleading ad campaign creates a pretty incredible experience because like from the trailers, you've only seen, let's say, a tenth of this movie. And trust me, you have no idea what it's actually about. And I hope nobody ruins it for you because it's incredible. You're like, what the heck? This is nuts. And that's part of the fun of the movie. <clears throat> if you know the twists and turns that are ahead, I think that's going to rob you of uh, almost most, most of what the experience is supposed to be. Uh, halfway through the movie, it just became so nuts, I stopped trying to figure it out and just enjoyed the ride. Because it was just really that nuts. And in fact, looking back, I don't even think it's that great a script. And I'm pretty sure that it doesn't all add up. I think a lot of this stuff is just silly. Uh, and there's even a, a mid credit scene, by the way, at the end, that tries to tie Argyle into Kingsman, but makes absolutely no sense. Although, I'll just say it now, if they want to put Henry Cavill in Kingsman, go ahead. Uh, but you're like, what the heck is this garbledy gook at the end of, end of the movie? And then apparently there's a prequel book that's actually being sold. You can order it right now from uh, uh, online that's trying to make it seem like Ellie Conway is a real person. I mean, at points, again, this movie and its ad campaign teeter on ridiculous, if not falling outright into ridiculous. But the conviction of Matthew Vaughn and his cast, an all-star cast, I mean, often during the movie, I was like, I can't believe that these actors agreed to do this. But they did, and they want to do it, and they love doing it, and that carries the day. Also, if you're really into a Sam Rockwell, Bryce Dallas Howard movie, I am. But again, as I said, that, that, that group might be low. <laughs> it might be small. So is Henry Cavill in the movie at all? Well, yeah, he is. He is. And you have seen, there, there are some scenes that you haven't seen with him. Uh, and with, but, but, but to me, the most interesting thing is that with this and the trailer for the upcoming Guy Ritchie movie, it seems that no longer being Superman or, or, or Geralt, uh, Geralt, 
I always mispronounce that name, but has lifted a great weight from his shoulders. You know, I think he's just like, it was such a tense, horrific situation both times that I think maybe part of Henry Cavill now is just like effort. And you can see that he's really loosened up with his work and he seems to be adding a comedic element to his acting, which I love. I mean, particularly when you see his final scene in this film, and you might think you've seen the final scene for him in the film, but hold on, you haven't. It's at the very, 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 very end. But I was like, what are you doing, Henry Cavill? This is so crazy, but I like it. It seems like we're only just starting to get to know the real Henry Cavill, and I am intrigued. Uh, but as for Dua Lipa and John Cena, for the most part, you've seen their scenes in the trailer. There's a scooch more John Cena, and it was funny to see him in contrast to Henry Cavill, because believe it or not, John Cena is the more experienced, better actor of the two. But I do think that, you know, we always talk about actors picking another actor for a blueprint, and I wouldn't be surprised if Henry Cavill maybe to some degree picks John Cena, and after seeing this movie, I think that might be a good choice for him. Uh, Henry Cavill, it seems, can be quite funny. Uh, although there's also the factor that uh, he's so good looking that you just laugh at his jokes anyway. <laughs> but I mean, if whatever it works, he's, he's going for it. All right, the other big roles in the movie, interestingly, are Catherine O'Hara as Howard's mom. Her role is so big. And Brian Cranston as the head of a shadowy spy organi organization. Also, very, very big role. But Ariana DeBose, ridiculously, not in a good way, almost insultingly small role. I can't believe they cut her almost entirely out of the film. I thought, I thought that was really a bad, a bad look. Hollywood is expecting Argyle, the industry is, to play especially well with women. And once you see this movie, that will make total sense to you. It's weird because it's been advertised perhaps more as something for men, but it is not. I hope guys are open to this movie. I think it's so fun. It's also, guys, a fantastic date movie. As I said, perfect for Valentine's Day. As the movie progresses, it becomes more and more romantic until it's just a full-blown romance, which was fantastic and, and, and insane, culminating in a third act that is just so insane, it not only works, but it put a smile on my face and my, my press screening, the audience, the whole audience was laughing, laughing so hard. Not at the movie, but with it. Well, I think some people might have been laughing at the movie, but I wasn't. I thought it was hysterical. Again, Rockwell is absolutely, absolutely amazing here. And I love that Matthew Vaughn and Apple Films uh, cast him in this role, something most directors and studios would never do. Same for Bryce Dallas Howard. Now, she's been fantastic in the Jurassic World movies, and she's now stepping behind the camera for Star Wars and doing a great job. But wow. What a role this is. It's incredible that she got it, to be honest with you. Because if you were going by typical Hollywood casting rules, this movie would probably star, let's say, Jennifer Garner or David Harbour. Who do you think it would star if you were going by old school casting rules? Uh, but the fact that it stars Rockwell and Howard is a miracle. And I hope that Vaughn and Apple are rewarded for taking that risk instead of being reminded that Hollywood does things a certain way for a reason. I'm very nervous about this movie's box office prospects. I suspect it might be a huge bomb, but I really liked it. Is this Speed Racer 2? For a movie that cost 200 million, my gosh, Apple, that's three in a row now, and they're all super long. What are you doing over there? I mean, uh, I thought I think this is actually the best of the three, to be honest with you. Although I did appreciate uh, parts of Napoleon very much, uh, but this one for 200 million, it has way too much green screen. Like it's super obvious that this globe trotting adventure isn't so globe trotting. I'm like, come on. Another green screen, and I can practically see the see the um, uh, the pixels. Uh, what did they spend all that money on? Well, I would assume the big cast. I mean, they're all happy to be there, but I think part of that happiness might be getting paid. Uh, very impressive and gorgeous sets. Very elaborate. The sets are insane. I love them. Uh, the VFX. There's a lot of VFX, even though a lot of times, just like with the green screen, they don't look so good. You're like, that's a digital mess, man. And the action scenes, very good action scenes, very long, long action scenes. I think the action scenes are fantastic. Very much like the Kingsman movies, particularly the modern ones, the first two. So if you enjoy the Kingsman movies, and again, that seems to be a bit of an acquired taste, but if you like those, you'll enjoy Argyle. This is perhaps most like Kingsman 2, I'm sorry to say, but better than that though. I would say it goes, Kingsman 1 is still the best, then Argyle, then Kingsman 2, and then the Kingsman, I thought that was, I liked it when I watched it, but 
you know, it's not as good. So sorry to say. Uh, and it's so much fun. It's as much fun to see Sam Rockwell as an action star as it was Colin Firth. And in fact, uh, Sam Rockwell gets more action sequences, which was great. Oh, and the music. There are a lot of great songs here. And as we all know, rights to songs are expensive. So I'm sure that costs a lot as well. Argyle, as I said, is also a very long movie, over two hours. Uh, but it didn't feel long to me, especially because it kept upping the ante again and again. And then just when you thought they couldn't up it anymore, they did it again. Vaughn apparently wants to turn Argyle into a franchise. And here's where he loses me, because while I really liked this movie, I think he's nuts to think that he can turn it into a franchise. Uh, I think it's too similar to Kingsman. I think it waters Kingsman down. And while I love Rockwell and Howard here, I, again, as I said, I think the number of people who enjoy this movie is going to be small. So I just don't see them having broad enough appeal to warrant a franchise, especially if it's this expensive. It's just, I just don't think it's going to work out. But I'm glad the movie exists for me and for a couple of us. But as I said, if Vaughn wants to put Henry Cavill into the Kingsman movies, I would not complain at all, especially if Cavill ends up not getting James Bond, which I think would be a real missed opportunity for the Bond movies. I mean, if you put Henry Cavill and Christopher Nolan together, I think you'd be able to just print money. Uh, although I think Henry Cavill has not yet proven his, I, I, although I don't know. I mean, he really did well with that Mission Impossible movie and look how the next one did without him. Just saying, or that's what I'd say if I was his agent. And The Witcher did quite well, you know, particularly the first season before it had some story issues. So, I mean, but he's not a proven commodity just yet, but I'd, I'd, I'd roll the dice on him. I mean, how difficult can he be? I'd just get through it because I like him on screen in the right role so much. So that's my non-spoiler review of Argyle. I hope nobody ruins any of the surprises for you because it's so nuts. It's just nuts. And I think this movie is worth seeing in theaters for that experience and so that nobody does ruin the surprises for you. But if what I just described does not sound good to you, well then save your money and you can totally catch this down the line on digital or even eventually Apple TV where it will end up. So again, that's my review. Share your own thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.